okay? I hurt myself and you laugh. Uh -huh. Okay. When you made the I-129F and you sent it off, you had a copy for you and you sent off a copy. Now what you're going to do is you're going to make another copy. Now that everything's been approved and the government likes it, you're going to make another copy and you're going to set this aside. You're going to have a package that you're going to have to send to your fiance. This is going to go in that package. Um, you need to send the original letter affirming that um, you desire to marry your fiance. And that's what the I-129F, the K-1 visa, the whole bit. You have to send an I-134 uh, affidavit of support. Now, there's going to be two affidavit of supports that you're going to have to fill out and send in. In the beginning, the first one is going to be the I-134. That one, the one you'll be sending now at the time that you're sending everything to her. Okay, so you will need several items for the above form. Gather duplicate evidence of income and resources as appropriate. So, basically... Okay, so um, it is a statement of, from the officer of the bank or official institutions with your deposit identifying that the following date account opened total de de deposit for the past year three present balance i think i did that statement no that was for me i had to send that ah uh, oh, that's for you yeah. okay because i remember I didn't so do it. the fiance whether it be male or female yeah. you're going to be sending all this documentation to them the i-129 129f that goes in there and then you're going to put in other documentation, and this is part of it. One will be the information from your bank account officer, uh, giving the date it was opened, uh, showing the total amount of deposits, showing the current balance. Um, year. Yeah, the year, year to date over the last year what the balances were at the end of each month. Your, your document will say that. Okay. And the statements from your employer or business stationery showing date and nature of employment, which is, okay, okay. And then salary paid, whether position is temporary or permanent, or included copies of your last two pay, pay stubs and, the, and then your previous. W-2 for the associated um, employer if available. Okay, so and then if self-employed, copy of a last income tax return filed or IRS transcripts or two, two report of commercial ratings concern and then a list containing serial numbers and denominations of bonds and name of records owners. All right, begin collecting this as soon as possible after your NAA2 arrives. That I pulled off of uh, NVC. Uh, NVC will have the information and it gives you a list of the different things. Um, now, one of the things that you're gonna have to have also <clears throat> we discussed this a little earlier, but it's proof of ongoing relationship. So it shows, number one, that you guys have met in the last two years. You guys are still talking. You guys are still talking. Uh, you still want to get married. You want to be together. Um, so here's some of the things that you'll need. Um, they say copy of landline uh, and cell phone bills well, realistically into the Philippines. Landline and cell phones are going to cost a lot if you do it that way. <clears throat> what we ended up doing was Skype 
and I showed that okay I'm a annual user of Skype I showed that um, I have a separate deal to allow me to call cell phones in Skype it's $13 a month I think is what it was and showed that um, and then it has where you can go in and make a list of calls that you've made having to do with those cell phone uh, with the cell phones that you call and I basically made that list and said that also um, you're gonna have to put in photos of you guys together in the Philippines or whatever country you're at yeah. together um, being in the Philippines would be a good one basically wherever you're at make sure that you take photos that are uh, prevalent to that region so what we did was we took photos of things that are only in um, Manila and um, that way we could show that number one I was there mm -hmm. <clears throat> we also you're gonna need to uh, there's several different pro types of proof but basically photos of y'all together mm -hmm. um, photos of you meeting the fiance's family um, take um, records the the records of you uh, traveling there your uh, passport tickets. your tickets showing that they were paid your um, your hotel for me it was hotel and car showing that um, and then uh, basically just showing pictures of where you were and what you were doing and you know that you were together yeah. um, this is the one that you like so so good babe which one? Oh, vaccination yeah <laughs> okay so um where was that the K1 and how beneficiary will be required the embassy to have a medical so um done prior to the visa interview so let's just say it um, straight right yep okay so you're gonna under uh, undergo for the vaccinations which is st. Luke's and physical exam like that that that's in the Manila area yeah was st. Luke's yeah it's in Manila all right and then uh, if you have other vaccinations that was before you can show it to them and then so that way they're gonna uh, you're gonna have less injections that you get okay in other words if you have all the injections needed to come into the u.s yeah uh, or that the u.s wants for you to mm -hmm. come in you won't have to have any injections mm -hmm. at all but if you don't you have to take and get the injections and excuse me and basically uh, they're going to take take a look at exactly what you have they're going to check you they're going to check your blood they're going to check uh, they're going to do uh, an exam, they're going to do x-rays, complete physical, yeah. uh, and vaccinations if necessary. Alright, so she's having a good laugh here. So basically what you need to do is once you get the um, approval, you need to go get your medical you the medical let's just say at manila area st luke's your medical is a first come first serve so what that means is you need to get there first thing in the morning but let's back up a little bit your interview date you have to call in and get the interview date set once the approval has been given to you you're going to call in you're going to set a date and a time for your interview once you do that, you have to take and back that time up two weeks. And within that two weeks, you need to take and go get your physical done. It has to be within two weeks of your interview. Now, the interview, you've already got set. You need to go to your physical. Like I said, it's a first come, first serve. 
My suggestion is get there first thing in the morning. You're gonna have, you're gonna be there two different days. Okay. So you were there two days. Okay. So I want to say something. Okay. Um, if I were you guys, um, you um just get a uh, near hotel there and uh St. Luke's area because there is two very close and because you're gonna be there and we are uh, two days and on the next day like first day on the that two days you're gonna get your um what's this the information the result yeah the result you're not supposed to open it yeah don't open the result yeah. now so make sure not to open the it you have a vanilla envelope and you have plastic over that. Mm. Okay. Don't open either one. Just leave it alone. Let them open it when you go to the interview. If you do open it, you have to go to back to the consulate. Back. Yeah. You have to go back to the consulate. Let them know you opened it by mistake. Let them look at it. If they think that you were digging through it, they can shut it down and not take it, but normally they won't do that. What they'll do is they'll re reseal it and they may, they may change your date. Okay. They don't have to keep the date the same. So don't open your, your envelope. Now you've taken your medical, you've got your envelope, take that complete envelope, Plus, all the information that you still have, okay, you want both of those when you go into your interview. You'll go into your interview and everything will be good. If you don't have all that information and they start asking for stuff, not good. The bad thing is, the majority of these guys, they already have the information. They want duplicates to make it easier on them. Exactly why I don't know, but whatever. Make sure to have your duplicates ready and available for them. Um, okay, now after after you do your interview, it's no, I need to tell them first about the interview. Please. Tell them what you you were there. I wasn't there. Interview. Oh, this one sixteen. Hey, this one sixteen. Well, oh. we've already discussed that this one sixteen. Yeah. It's there. Okay. Now, what about the interview? Oh, interview. It's easy, but okay. Don't get nervous about the interview, and then um. If there's a problem, I mean, if there's no problem, it looks like they're going to give you in three days. But mine, I got it one week, right? Yeah, it was one week. I got it one week. They're going to tell you on the spot after the interview, they will tell you. You're going to get, you can get it after one week. And to go travel, um, I got it to Mall of Asia. I went there to pick it up. Okay, so that is a yellow envelope also. <laughs> and don't open that one. Don't open it. Because the other one, I, oh, it's not me. It's the guard open it. <laughs> yeah, okay. It's not me. Uh, okay. It's the, but it's not really the, the envelope. It's the plastic. So that's okay. It's <laughs> not a problem. And I was so nervous that time because I thought... We're going to need to wait till how many months before they seal it back. Yeah. And that time I asked a lot and find out it's okay. <laughs> so now you have the envelope, you have the okay. Um, now's the time to set up for the travel to go to the U.S. or whatever country you're going to. Now, again, we're discussing about the U.S. The other countries, I don't know what the rules are there. Um, 
do not make your plane tickets, uh, do not set them until you get the approval in. Because there was a couple times where we should have had the approval and they didn't meet the timelines that they were supposed to. And I almost got the plane tickets twice and it, we would have lost them. So, yeah, that was... Gonna pay more. Yeah. Um, now, now here's where we take and we go, uh, we're, we're going to give you kind of a one-off of what happened. We took and went to, um, we, I dropped into the Philippines, um, and let's see, I came into the Philippines, we got everything ready, uh, six days later, we left. Now, when we left, huh? The interview. The, it's like Pidos. Oh. How you call You're it? Europe. Hold on. The, it's not Pidos. I forgot actually. about that one. It's not Pidos. It's uh, called. You had to go learn how to be a good Filipina. How? Can I get it there? Yeah, I don't care. Uh, um, after the, the uh, visa, after the. After the approval has been done, after you've received your uh, visa. visa stamp. Okay, and then you're going to call the CFO, which is um, Commission on Filipinos over Overseas. Yep. Right? And then find out if what's the available for them. It's, it's kind of, what's this? It's like an hour and a half, two hours yeah. long. Yeah, and they're going to teach you how to be a good Filipino or citizen here in the, in the United States. How to stay out of trouble. Yeah, that's mostly. And, and, gonna, and wait a minute, it also takes and explains they're worried about their citizens mm -hmm. and it explains how if something goes wrong, um, how to get yourself out of a bad situation. So say you come to the United States and the person that you fell in love with is not the mm -hmm. person that you're, you're there expecting. with. Yeah. yeah. Um, say, God forbid, the person starts, what? I'm so happy. <laughs> uh, <laughs> God forbid, say the the person beats you mm -hmm. or is bad to you in one way or another yeah. and um, you can't deal with it anymore. Well, they discuss that in that class and they discuss what you can do to help get away if necessary. Yeah. Um, that doesn't mean if you have an argument, oh, I have to leave. Understand. You're right. Being, uh, understand your rights, yeah. but understand that being married is an experience and it's something you have to work at, um, both sides. And um, this just, oh. all right. Uh, and this just, um, this class helps you understand um, what your rights are, uh, what you should do in certain situations, and uh, gives you directions of where to go to uh, make it all better. Mm -hmm. Okay, and, and if necessary, get you back to the yeah. Philippines as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. And then um, they're gonna help you there, and you're gonna have another interview there. You you're gonna need a lot of the paperwork which is we told you about that earlier what paperwork is it yeah okay it's the same on the all of the paperwork that you have so that the u.s embassy didn't get it that's supposed to be on the other one the yeah. cfo okay all right and you can call the cfo in advance to make sure of exactly what what you need 
what you need and also you need to call them in advance that way you can set up for a class a timeline of the class excuse me a timeline of the classes that they have that way you can make sure you can get in okay now I want to tell them about what is very important they asked me. Tell them. Okay, they asked me there. It's the same of the interview and the U.S. Embassy. And then they're going to get the pictures from the trips that he got uh, or your fiancé being there in the Philippines. They're going to get all the information too. And how did you meet? There's a lot of questions too. So they're going to make your mind twist if <laughs> you're lying or not yeah but anyway you got your visa already <clears throat> yeah and uh that class cost 400 450 um approximately 10 us dollars it was like 400 or 450 pesos it's I like 175 or one. Oh, i thought it was more than that no i i guess it's like that okay both. Anyway, I know not both. It's half half. It's okay. <laughs> Let's go to the next one. Um, okay, now we're done with all of that, right? Yep. Okay, so now I dropped in. Six days later, we we're on our way out. Um, and you can just drop in and she can be waiting there and turn around on the next plane and leave. It just, it all depends on you. You need to set up that in advance. Yeah. Uh, you're going to be surprised because a one-way ticket for her will be more than what your round trip ticket is normally. Yeah. Unless you set it up way in advance. Uh, but you can't do it. Yeah. <laughs> um, so what ends up happening is you go to check in at the airport. And at the check, check in, they're going to take a look at all of her documentation. Mm -hmm. Or all of the fiance's documentation. Yeah. They're going to take a look at all that and make sure that uh, she has a visa because they won't let her leave if she doesn't. Yeah. Or him, whichever the case may be. Um, and then you'll be flying in to an international airport here in the U.S. eventually. Now, when that happens, you have to do a check-in, but it's not a normal check-in. You have to do an immigration check-in complete, including with visa. Normally, like in LAX, when you come in... Um, when you get ready to go through the immigration piece, it's all the way to the far left. Um, and you go through over there. Basically, it's going to take about 10 to 15 minutes. They're going to look mm -hmm. through all of your documentation. They're going to look through all of her documentation. Make sure that everything's there. Hi, guys. We've hit the end of the part two video, Fiance K-1 Visa. Stay tuned for the up and coming part three video coming soon. Sorry for the length of the videos, but I do hope that they help you to get your visa. Have a great day. Bye.